Ladies and gentle beans, do you quite remember that a couple of videos back I actually sent out a message saying that Bo-Katan Delore, Mandalorian Bo-Katan, her legendary event was coming back to the holo tables for the third time this week. You know, before Jed Mike Cal comes back for the third time, even though he's been on the game for like nine months. It's funny how that thing works, right? Yeah, well, there she is. She is coming in three days and 14 hours time at the time of this recording. Isn't that nutty? So I just want to prep you guys, try to make sure that you're going to be ready for this. We've data mined some additional packs and more importantly, your boy Scribble over here. Well, not for nothing, but I am going to say that this is the final character left in my journey guide for me to unlock. And guess what? I am actually there. We have got all of her marquees ready and rearing to go. I am so excited for this. I can't wait. I'm going to be done. But more importantly, there has been a little bit of other data mined news from the Swigger Events Discord server. Meathead did take to the Discord server. And if you recall, Right at the start of the year, we had some data mined information around a particular galactic chase that was coming up, which turned out to be the comeuppance. Zori Bliss is Y-Wing, the best resistance ship that you're probably not going to be using because it still doesn't really do enough, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, never mind. But also, at the same time, we did data mine an additional thing that was suggesting that we were getting another marquee. Another marquee that eluded us in the month of January, but no, it will not elude us any longer. Meathead was on the Swagger Events Discord server and confirmed that we are getting a kit reveal today. At some point, that is right, your boy Scribble here has got an exclusive kit re I don't have an exclusive kit reveal, I wish I did. Meathead just ignores all my messages, he doesn't like me. I can't imagine why. I mean, I'm so engaging and endearing, right? Anyway, well, there is a couple of things that might point towards what this character might be. As we know, today is today. This year is the year of Phantom Menace anniversary number 25. But if we take a look at the February login, we can see that B1 Battle Droid is a login reward. We can see that B2 Battle Droid is also a login reward, which would imply alongside the 25th anniversary of the Phantom Menace that the rewards that we are going to get and the marquee character that is going to be released and announced later on today will most likely be a separatist droid. Finally, we're going to get some uplifts for those separatist droid. Maybe Trench can come firmly off the bench. Who do I think it's going to be? I think we're going to get General Kalani. I'm hoping it's General Kalani. He's got a rather attractive green exoskeleton. And I like it. Don't know who else it might be. Obviously, it could be other characters from that era. We could be getting a Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi, for example. It might happen. Who can say? But I'd say things are pointing a little bit more towards Separatist droids. Let me know what you think it's going to be in the comment section down below. And don't cheat. Don't come back after the kit reveal has been announced and be like, I knew it was going to be General Kalani the whole time. I told you it was going to be Boss Nass. No, no cookies for you if you cheat. Anyway, with Bo-Katan coming back, I decided to have a little bit of fun with the current set of Datacrons. I don't have Bo-Katan's Datacron at the moment, but I do have one particular other Mandalorian Datacron just chilling in my inventory, and I decided to take a look and see what can we actually get done with this particular Datacron in the absence of Bo-Katan's one. So it's a BAM Datacron, and we're going to have some fun with it. The level 3 over here means that every time we inflict a debuff on the enemy, we're going to be dealing percentile max health damage to them. This only applies to light side characters. And the level 6 means whenever a Mandalorian ally damages an enemy with an attack, if that enemy was damaged during the last Mandalorian ally turn, all Mandalorian allies gain 2% offense stacking to the end of battle. This seems phenomenal to me. Absolutely phenomenal. And the level 9 is obviously for our BAM guy. After using Discipline Setup, which is the stance for Whistling Birds, the Mandalorian Beskar armor can't be defeated. He's immune to fear and stun and TMR. Swift Takedown deals 20% more damage per stack uh, for each stack of Whistling Birds on the Mandalorian Beskar armor. So, if he had 20 stacks, he's doing, you know, 400% damage, is that right? I can math. Anyway, I wanted to see what fun we could have. Let's check it out. As is always the case with these things, our first punching bag is, of course, going to be Lord Vader. 
because, you know, it's Lord Vader. So I went in with Watt under a mole lead. We use Watt to trigger the first stage of Frenzy on our mole, so he gets that first turn, does the AoE, all that bonus turn meter gets fed to Kandra, so he uses a special, boom! We've got five stacks of, of Seething Rage with mole. This means all these attacks should theoretically be ramping all of the offense of all of our Mandalorians by 2% every single time we do this, which is, you know, a decent amount of offense stacking, I feel. We immediately melt through Royal Guard, and we melt through Admiral Piet. Now, I know the Royal Guard was only Relic 5, but whatever, we're allowed to have fun, guys. It's okay, and I know this is a team you can't really take Maul away from Lord Vader, but again, having fun is important. So, we immediately get rid of Darth Vader, and it's just down to Maul and Lord Vader himself. Funnily enough, we are able to use damage immunity to interrupt Maul, and then we taunt with Bam with damage immunity so he cannot die. Isn't it wonderful? I absolutely adore it. So I thought, hmm, what can we do from here? How can we get rid of Lord Vader? Perhaps we should potentially maybe work our way over into Whistling Birds and see just how much damage, 400% additional damage, with a load of stacked offense is going to be when we've got 20 stacks of Whistly Birds. So I put some damage in just to test the waters with Lord Vader. Not that much damage. Maul, on the other hand, decides to just disappear out of existence. I'm like, oh, okay, that wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad after all. And I just need to get to that turn with Bam right now. Lord Vader goes into ultimate. Obviously, Bam is immune to ability block, so I'm not too concerned about that. We send a rocket his way, and he triggers a bonus turn from Bam, I think. Down into Whistling Birds. Now, Bam, we know. He can't die at this point. So as long as we can stack up a bunch of Whistling Birds, we should be doing a lot of juicy damage. So I unload with the Seething Rages, even though we've only got two stacks of it. It's still a significant amount of Whistling Birds. We're at 14 stacks, 15, 16 stacks, 20. 20 stacks of Whistling Birds. We've hit the jackpot, baby. Can we deal enough damage to Lord Vader? I should hope so. He's only got half health and he's Relic 7, so let's do the birds. Yeah, he disappeared. But how much damage was that? Ooh, about 80,000 per bird. There are 20 stacks of whistling birds. 80,000 times 20? Well, 10 would be 800,000 points of damage, so double that. 1.6 million damage. Yeah, that's enough to kill Lord Vader. That's enough to kill just about anything, I would hope. But does it beat anything else? I mean, that's a rhetorical question. Let's be honest. Of course it beats other things. Let's go check it out. So going from Lord Vader, which we know, you know, he normally keels over the lightest of breezes, I decided to test it against a toxic layer comp. And I know the toxic layer comp now without the Drogon Kron is not quite as toxic as once we first believed, but it's still a decent team. So I thought, why not? Let's give this a test. Same team, same setup. Immediately get that bonus frenzy turn from Maul triggering all the bonus TM towards our good boy Kandras, who can then trigger the second frenzy so that Maul can go out with five stacks of Seething Rage and just start eliminating fools. I was tempted to just go straight in on Leia, but I thought, nah, let's leave Leia for the Whistling Birds. So we focus on Chewbacca instead, trying to get rid of that guard, trying to get rid of, you know, all the additional assists and all the additional damage that they might deal. Turns out Chewbacca did kind of melt face. And then we go in for Han Solo and nearly one shot him truth be told and then it's going back over to captain drogan let's try and spread that damage out a little bit now i want to get rid of captain han captain han han solo because he could be a bit of a threat so he gets melted and we're just left with leia we've got drogan and we've got r2d2 just chilling in the back hiding i mean he it's not c3po it doesn't normally hide we nearly lost bam there but we fortunately managed to hold on so i go into whistling birds because i want to make sure we see this out again bam can't die when he's in the Whistling Bird stance, thanks to this new Datacron. So I'm trying to keep people alive, and I'm trying to get to 20 stacks of Whistling Birds to maximize that damage output. As we know, 20 stacks of Whistling Birds is true damage, you can't resist it. If he hits 20 stacks, he's going to do about 1.6 million damage, which I'm pretty sure that not even a Relic 9 Leia Organa actually has. So just to prove our point, she decides in her uncanny manner just to basically fully heal all of her protection. Drogon can be obnoxious at times, I guess. And out comes the Whistling Birds. And once again, as we know, they just melt face, don't they? They just melt face. She disappears. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And then Drogon decides to eat it. Spoiler warning, we win this match. Who knew? Um, but I'm not going to bother showing you the rest of it. It's pretty plain sailing from here. There's going to be a taunt on the healthiest ally, which is not going to be Bam. Bam is going to be able to put damage immunity, go back into Whistling Burns. All this good business is going to happen. 
Is it a team that I'm most likely going to be using in the future? I don't think so. But again, it's okay to have a little bit of fun and just see what you've got to work with. It's all good. All right, guys, make sure you keep one eye on YouTube for my notifications because I will get a kit reveal out for that character as soon as I see it drop on the forums. Keep your eyes and ears peeled. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And until the next video, peace out. And may the force be with you.